Hey Glam Dolls! Welcome back to my channel. It's Taylor here. If you're new, welcome. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. So today's video is super duper exciting and interesting because today I will be sharing with you guys my testimony. So a lot of you guys don't really know this or like I really haven't had the opportunity or I just really haven't shared my testimony with you guys as of yet because I just felt like I just wanted to get in the headspace to where I was fully ready and yeah I just it just didn't feel like the right time but I felt like this would be a good video to film to kind of help you guys grasp an idea of my spiritual journey or my faith journey and how I've got to where I am today and why I'm so strong in it so um yeah, if you clicked on this video to hear my testimony, this is the perfect place to be. And if not, I hope that you're touched by this video in some type of way because each person's story is super duper special. So I watch a lot of these videos all the time. So it's so crazy to finally be filming mine. Yeah, I hope you guys take something away and I hope you guys uh, don't judge. Remember, we all are sinners, okay? We're all sinners and we all come from a certain type of place. Like nobody is perfect and still to this day ain't nobody perfect. So um, I hope that my story can help somebody and yeah, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So if you guys are excited to hear my testimony, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so first starting out, I guess I can go back to like just the beginning. As a younger child, I did grow up in a church, but I wasn't really that present in the church household. It wasn't like a every, we weren't like everyday goers, but we would go here and there. And of course we'd go for Easter and different things like that, but we weren't that um, religious and going to church week after week after week. And as I got older, it's kind of like me and my family kind of fell off of going to church. So it just became like normal not to go to church. So it was just kind of like my dad just started going to church by himself. And then we kind of just stopped going to church mainly because it was a little bit further out and the church was a little bit older. So I feel like for me, I thought it was boring because as a young child, you can't really relate to an older church. Like you don't really understand what's going on. So that whole type of thing, personally for me, I can only speak for my, myself. So um, yeah, I knew going to church was good, but you know, we weren't really that heavy but don't get me wrong my family my family is a huge faith-filled family so as a child my brother was christened and he was baptized but me me I wasn't christened or baptized when I was younger so it's like I really didn't understand what being baptized or being christened was as I got older I became more curious with the idea of baptizing for some reason I would always see people get baptized but I never really knew what it meant or what was the reason for it I just knew that people did it and personally me I never did it so I was never christened as a child I never was prayed over and I can remember always asking my mom like why did I get baptized like was I ever baptized why was I ever baptized and she basically just left the choice up to me she said when I was ready to get baptized I could get baptized but I was always afraid like just watching people having to dunk their face in the water I don't know it just scared me for some reason just the whole idea of God in a way kind of scared me as a child because I really didn't understand who God was I didn't really understand the meaning or anything like that so I feel like that placed a lot of fear in my heart because I didn't really know what was happening, you know? Fast forward to when I got older, my freshman year of high school, I was maybe like 14 or 15. Something just sparked into my head to where I just all of a sudden wanted to start going back to church. I don't know what it was, but like for, like I said, for the whole period of time, I wasn't really going to church, but then something was just like, start going back to church. And around that time, for some reason, like I told y'all, I thought I was gonna be a singer. Okay, so around that time, I was super duper into singing, and it's like I wanted to sing so bad. Like, I, I begged my mom to give me singing lessons. Like, I really wanted to learn how to sing. And my dad would tell me, Well, if you want to learn how to sing, just go join the choir. So I'm like, Okay, you want me to join the choir? But you know, I already know I should be putting God first. Mind you, I would pray, 
I would pray on my own, but it's like I, I really did. It was like a disconnect. I feel like around that time I was using God as a genie because, like I said, I didn't really understand the meaning of God fully. Like, I would just ask God for stuff. Like, that's what I felt like going to God was for. Like, if you needed something, if you wanted something, that's when you would go to God. And it's so crazy to think back to now. But so we found a church that was closer to my home and I, I went with my mom. And when we went, it was so different than my personal experiences of going to church back in the day like it was more hip it was more young the songs were more relatable the songs were more funky and upbeat they were fun the pastor I could understand him like he wasn't preaching in like crazy pastor mode like he was just chill he was just relaxed like like I could understand what he was saying like I don't know that just the whole church vibe was just lit for me like I was like okay I like going to church. So that's when I started going more religiously. I would go every Sunday and I would take my mom with me. But every Sunday when I would go to church, it would come the time when they would ask, who wants to give their life to Christ today? Who wants to come down the aisle and give their life to Christ today? And me sitting there, I'll just be like, my goodness, like I like it's like I would feel something in my stomach, like but it's like I personally just could not build up the courage to walk up there in front of all of these people and go to the front, like go to the altar. Like I felt so scared to do that because it's like you're walking up there and like you got everybody looking at you and they just, I don't know, it's just really, really, really awkward and it's just really, 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 you gotta have strength. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have a strength. Okay, so that, I feel like that helped me back from that helped me back a long time from getting saved because I was too scared to walk in front of all these people. Like, and the church was big, and I was afraid to walk in front of all these people and get saved. Right. So finally, it came a Sunday where we were at church and he was preaching, and the sermon was about God being the shepherd and Him caring for all His lambs. Right. We are the lambs of God. But it said he basically said you don't want to be the lamb that's left behind and I still remember this sermon as like to this day like he said you don't want to be you don't want to be the lamb that's left behind you want to go with God like you don't want to be the lamb that's left like you want to be with the shepherd like and for some reason that sermon just like stuck with me like no I don't want to be the lamb that's left behind like I want God to take me and, and I realized that if I'm not baptized that that won't happen like I'm going to hell if I'm not baptized like you know what I'm saying like I want God to take me too so in that moment it's kind of like I had like a clicking and then like once the sermon was over he was like you want to give your life to Christ today come up here and then I felt like he was like we'll wait on you we'll da -da 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 -da. and it's like I was like just contemplating it contemplating it but this time it was different and it's like I looked at my mom and I was like mom like I think I want to go up there and she was like sure you want to she was like you want to go up there and I was like yeah and it's like I just felt something like pulling me like something like obviously it was God but I felt like God called me that day and was like this is your day and I just felt like like you know how you try to sit but you feel something like telling you to get up and go to the altar that's what I felt and I didn't want to walk by myself so I thank my mom for being so supportive because she walked with me in front of all these people I was like let's go I was like yes I want to go so she walked with me in front of all these people all the way to the front and I just I don't know I, I was just trying to just stay focused and just get to the front and once I got there I just started crying like the pastor asked me you know first the pastor asked me he said do you believe that Jesus he was born on the earth and he died for your sins or something like that he just said it so like serious like down pat like boom boom bam and I was like oh shoot like this is real like this like this moment is real like do I really believe that Christ died for my sins like Jesus was born like and he was raised he was raised to heaven like in three days do I really believe that Jesus died for my sin died for my sins and was raised back to life do I really believe that and in that moment it's just like me realizing like this is real like Jesus is real like this is like a real moment and it's like I was just like yes and then after that I just started boo boo crying I was just crying 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 and it's like something was just coming over me like his grace his mercy I could just feel it all as a 15 year old child like I don't know it was just crazy and from that moment on like I just felt crazy right not crazy but in a good way so eventually I started going to the different classes and my mom came with me because we both had to become members of the church and 
ultimately at the end of that I got baptized and that was like a really serious moment it was a great moment um, yeah I got baptized so after following that for a while like that's when I started dibbling and dabbling in church again like I would go here and there like I really wasn't committed to going to church then after that I left to go to college so arriving at college I want finding a church home at college wasn't really on my mind um, I just felt like the churches there were just a little bit different than what if there's nothing like your personal church home and it's like when you go to college you only have so many options to pick from you get what I'm saying and the, the school that I went to it was so many it was so many churches surrounded like it was kind of overwhelming and kind of hard to choose because it was a church here church there church there church there church there like it's just so many churches so I just felt like I don't know like I just wasn't into it being in high school I don't think many people really understood this about me but I really felt like I really did not know myself in high school like I felt like I was always trying to fit in and I was always trying to just figure myself out but couldn't really do it like high school was just like not good for me like I really did not enjoy high school although there were good moments I overall like towards the end I just was fed up with high school and I was just ready to start over and ready to just truly figure myself out so I feel like once I got to college I just started dibbling and dabbling in different things that I knew I didn't need to be a part of like for me like after being saved or whatever like I always knew that God had a different calling on my life like I always felt it but it's kind of like I would run away from it like deep down inside I always knew he, he wanted me to be a certain type of way and I felt like I was always running from it if you get what I'm saying once I got to college I just wanted to be this bad chick so bad like this hardcore baddie chick like that's just who I wanted to be like a rebel like just forget these dudes like I'm gonna do me like you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I was. And so, like, get to college, drinking a lot, going to different parties, dibbling and dabbling in different dudes, losing my virginity. Didn't lose my virginity until I got to college. Do I regret it? No, because it's made me who I am today. But could I have done without it? Yes. Just, and that was a hard moment for me, too, because I really, like, if I held on it, held on to it until I was 18, just imagine... You know what I'm saying? Like what what has what would have what would have a little bit more time of holding on to it would have done. You get what I'm saying? Because I'm celibate now. So what's the difference? But I think I needed that. I needed that to grow and really understand the journey and the purpose that God had for me. So dibbling and dabbling and doing different things that I shouldn't have been doing and you know, just really trying to figure myself out and then you know I came across a relationship and this was like towards my ending year of freshman year I came across this relationship we started talking the next thing you know we started dating like even going into the summer we was talking heavy very uh sexually act active and um it was just a lot like the relationship was super duper good in the beginning the, the relationship the relationship definitely had its great moments but it also had its bad and it was super duper toxic like towards the ending like super duper toxic and it was to the point where I knew I was in a situation that I couldn't get out of like I knew I was in some some mess like there was a lot of different things happening in the relationship and it was different things that I never would have expected for me personally to go through because you always see other people go through stuff then when it happens to you you you're like me like out of all people me like how did this happen to me like me how did I get myself into a situation like this like it was just a lot of realis it took a lot of realization to even understand what I was in you get what I'm saying so dealing with that situation it, I think finally I just hit rock bottom and I just kind of like broke down on my knees one day and I just started crying like mind you I haven't really been talking to God this whole time that I've been in college this is like what two years in and I barely consulted with God with anything that I've done up to the up to this point and I just found myself like in my dorm room breaking down on my knees crying like begging God like please help me like get out of this like God what am I in like what am I doing how did I get here but you know praying to God asking for help but still like dealing like it's kind of hard like, when you're in certain situations and you love somebody it's hard to get yourself out of those situations like that so you just find yourself still dealing with it and putting up with it or trying to help the person or trying to figure it out or trying to make it better but it's like you're only making it worse because clearly you two are not meant to be together so why do you guys keep trying
you get what I'm saying. So, so toward the ending of that year, we started kind of like trickling off away from each other until the point where I went home from summer break, going into my junior year. I went home for summer break, thinking everything's all cool and dandy, and comes to find out I wasn't feeling well. So as I'm trying to figure out well, what's going on, why well, I don't feel good. So now with this next part of the story, this is super duper important and I'm only telling it to help somebody out there. God's already delivered me from it, God's always already healed me from it, and honestly, I really don't, honestly, honestly, it is what it is, okay? Okay, so come to find out I'm pregnant, right? I'm pregnant by this person that is super duper toxic, our relationship or our relationship together as a whole were super duper toxic for each other, you get what I'm saying? And I'm pregnant so it's kind of like how am I gonna have this person's baby and I know that we are personally dealing with toxic situations ourselves so it's like being pregnant is something I could have never imagined at what what was I how old was I Nin was I 19 being pregnant at 19 was something that I could have never imagined in my life um I felt like a failure I felt like I let my family down having to come home and tell my mom that I might need to go pick up a pregnancy test because I'm not sure if I'm pregnant and I've never talked to her about being sexually active before it was something super duper embarrassing and awkward and it's kind of like I truly felt like in that moment I hit rock bottom because how could I let myself get to this point like and there's nothing I can do like once you're in that situation there's nothing you can do like you're in the situation like there's nothing you can do like if you tell people people are gonna laugh at you people are gonna talk about you people are gonna have so much to say about you so it's like you gotta deal with this on your own you gotta deal with this by yourself and in that moment the only person that I could turn to was God dealing being in that type of situation was super duper hard because it's like in a very in a, in a very toxic situation and I could possibly be like I'm about to have this person's baby no like I'm just thinking about me already being placed in a bad situation and then for my baby there's absolutely no way that that could possibly happen so that's when I like broke down on my knees and I started crying and I started praying to God nobody could understand what I'm going through because I told nobody about the toxic side of the relationship they just know you know what I'm saying that I'm dealing with somebody like so it's like the only person that I could truly turn to that I knew would not judge me was God which is so crazy because that sounds like the only person I could turn to was God but literally the only person I could turn to in that situation was God like that's the only person that knew everything that knew what was going on that was there the whole, the whole time and mind you I'm not really spiritual at this point so it's like for me to just hit rock bottom and just automatically start praying and turn, turning to God that was like a crazy moment and it just shows his grace because no matter how much you mess up he's still right there to pick you up and I just remember just talking and just crying and just asking God like what do I do like in this situation what do I do what do I do what do I do and so I prayed on it I prayed on it and ultimately I did what I had to do I terminated the whole situation that's something that I wouldn't wish on nobody like I wouldn't encourage that I don't promote that I don't want that for anybody do I regret what I did no because it's brought me to where I am today would I encourage somebody else to do it no would I ever do it again no that's just it is what it is and it was what it was and God has already delivered me from it he has already healed me from it so there is nothing that nobody can say listen this is my testimony this is how I am to where I am today because without that situation I wouldn't even be here to tell this story like without that situation I wouldn't even be far in my spiritual life like I am today so there is nothing that nobody can say to me you can try to nitpick but let me ask you are you perfect are you perfect oh okay that's what I thought because I thought a perfect person said something because because what oh okay but yeah like just a very hard situation so that situation happened to me and just being put in that situation it was just really really hard and it was just really really hard a lot of long not long nights of crying um after that i started dealing with like serious anxiety but also i started praying so much more there was not a day that i went where i was separated from, from god because i felt like right there in that moment god was telling me like if you just give me your hand i will guide you and lead you completely out of this situation like mind you being in school like I did not care about school at all. I did not care about my grades. I did not care about nothing. I did not care about school, y'all. I did not care.
care about school. I did not care about elevating. I did not care about none of that. I, I just cared about just doing what I wanted to do. So just going through this situation, it was just really hard. Just how God came through for me through it all, like that's how I knew he was guiding me and leading me. It was not easy. I just want to make sure that I quote that. Like that, that whole situation was nothing light. It was nothing easy. It was a lot of going back and forth, a lot of contemplating on what to do, a lot of different things. And it's like, I know a lot of women probably deal with the same exact thing. So that's why I feel like moved to share. But um, it was just a lot. It was just a really, really hard, dark time. Like a really, really hard, dark, dark time for me. And I thank God for not allowing me to become depressed or anything like that because he was with me the whole way. Like when I tell you when I hit rock bottom, all that I could see was God. I didn't care about nobody else's opinion about me. I feel like I went ghost on so many people. Like I just stayed to myself. I wasn't on social media. I didn't talk to nobody. And that whole summer was just me and God because I had to recuperate. Like how could I let myself fall this low? How could I even let myself be in a situation like this? so embarrassing like I just I just felt like a failure and I just really needed to really figure myself out and figure out why am I even here right now like what if like God what are you trying to like do with me like I've been playing with you this entire time like I'm I promise you like if you bring me out of the situation like I'm giving my life to you there's no if ands or buts about it like it is what it is and that's what it's gonna be so going back to school <sighs> I went back a completely different person and I, I don't think anybody realized how different my mindset was like I just went through so much and it's like just just the way that I was operating I was just in a different headspace in a different head zone and I was just committed to God I felt kind of like a child again like that whole child like um, spirituality where you're just like I don't know we're just looking to God for everything like you know when you're a toddler or a child like you always look up to your parents so I felt like that was just what I was because it's kind of like I was starting over my spirituality and you know coming back to school and then all of a sudden changing I know people was just curious as to what was going on with me because I'm just gonna be coming back to school like kind of losing the taste for drinking um, posting scriptures every day on my on my social media um, listening to gospel music all the time different things like that it was just crazy and it's like from that point forward I would always have religious roommates I don't know what I feel like God was just trying to let me know that he was in the room because when I came back to school I had a really religious I had a really religious roommate and she would play gospel music every single day and she would pray every single night she would grab her bible and she would read and she would read her bible out loud read her bible out loud i didn't bother her because obviously i'm just not starting my, my spiritual journey so it really didn't bother me that she did that but i guarantee if i was still in the same headspace like i was the two years beforehand i would have been like can you please shut up can you please stop but you know obviously now with me being the headspace i was i was just kind of curious to like dang how could she be so confident and praying in front of me and not caring like you can tell she was just focused on her and God and little does she know that really inspired me and helped me to be more confident because um I don't know after watching her every night praying and she would pray throughout the day I think it helped me build my confidence in God and she really taught me how to be confident in God believe it or not so it's it's just crazy how he just places people in your life to help impact you and to help grow you and God and mind you we never even really talked I didn't really talk to my roommate like that but just being in the atmosphere with her and just watching how she prayed and different things like that it did impact me and it did um, inspire me and it did help me in a lot of ways and in, in more ways than one now going back to school that next year I just saw my life kind of do like a flip like a 360 so many great things started happening for me like my grades were skyrocketing up I was getting amazing grades the different organizations that I want to be a part of I, I joined and I got in um, there were pageants and different things I went out for that I would have never done if I was still in the old headspace that I was in but I did and God just brought me through it even that alone is like a whole entire story oh no I should share I did a pageant and so with this pageant it was super duper this pageant is super duper sentimental to me because it was the first moment that I really declared my love for God in front of the whole, not the whole school, but in front of the school, you get what I'm saying? Um, I did like a praise dance and mind you, I'm still coming from the headspace of everything that I've just been through and I felt like that was my way to kind of give God the thanks and give God the glory for everything that he's done for me within that period of time. So 
Um, people don't know, but that praise dance that I did was super duper spiritual. That praise dance was so sentimental to me because it just represented everything that I've been through and nobody even knows. And um, certain things happen with that um, thing where people try to clown. And But you don't even know my situation. You don't even know what I went through. It was just so hard to just do that performance right there, but I did it. And that was my first time ever praise dancing and I gave it my all. I gave it all that I had and I felt like God was just so happy. Like he was just smiling on me and he was just so happy to just see me giving glory and honor and praise yeah and then the year after that i got another spiritual roommate she's still like one of my closest friends till this day um we became roommates it was just like a whole another situation because like we are just alike like just the way we became roommates is crazy and it's like i feel like god put me in likeness with somebody who's just like me so that i'm able to have a friend who is spiritual just like me who is dramatic and crazy just like me but we related so much and we helped each other so much through that last year of my college experience and we would always pray together we always talk about god still to this day so yeah like just me going through them trials and tribulations y'all it's like i give god all the glory honor and praise because without him i would not be where i am today like this woman that you see so confident so so into herself and knowing who she is it's all god like i feel like in my past i used to be so insecure i used to feel feel ugly um i feel like people would judge me people probably still judge me to this day but they listen i know who i am in god you can't judge this poof. i don't know i just felt and looked down i felt like like an outcast like i felt like not important you know what i'm saying but i feel like god just he has renewed me so much and he has just showed me like how much of a virtue i really am to, him, to his life like how much how much i truly mean to him you know what i'm saying i am truly a very important piece in this puzzle you get what i'm saying and he will show each of us that like how important we are to his body like i i told you guys before in a video like we are all a part of christ's body like the body truly can't move without us like the body truly can't move without me it truly can't move without you so it's like we have to answer the call and come to what it is that he desires for us to do and, and as time went on i just began to grow more and more in my spirituality i dig in some a couple other relationships after that and i hit rock bottom in those two and i feel like god just put me in my single season and that's why i did my full year of being single video because like that was him just helping me through that season and me just being focused on him and so right now i'm still single me being focused on him and not on this world and the things of this world um I'm still selling it till this day. I vowed that to God after that whole situation happened to me. That's how I became celibate because I gave that part of myself to God because I told God, like, I'm not playing. Like, this is yours. I don't even want it. Have it. This is yours. And when it is supposed to be with me, when I have a ring on my finger and I have my husband, that's when I would like it back. But until then, I don't want it. It is yours. I give it to you. I should have never touched it in the first place, but yeah that's how i feel with that whole situation and just different things that he's done yeah so he has helped me so so much and it's like it's just crazy to see my turnaround because from where i was y'all to who i am today like me i wasn't ever a spiritual person like this like you wouldn't even catch me in a room talk about god like that you wouldn't even catch me like sometimes i'd be like shocked at myself because it's like girl you praying like this you talking like this like is this really your life like is this really who you are because this is not who you were like back in the day like it just blows my mind to see the change that god has done in me that's how i know god is real because just the change on me like you can just feel his presence on me like just the change upon me it just makes no sense like it's literally god and if you don't notice that i don't know what to tell you like because literally if you if you remember who I was and you see who I am today, you can clearly see the change. People tell me that all the time. They see the change in me. And it's not even on purpose, but it's just like, it's just God. And he's done so much for me to me, for me to ever think that I, that I would go back to how I used to be. It's like I devote my life to God because God saved me. And that one time where I needed help and nobody was there for me, nobody had my back. You know what I'm saying? Even family members, like although they pretend like they have to be supportive, they didn't even have to be supportive. But although they were trying, they still had their thoughts in the back of their mind of how they felt about the whole situation. You get what I'm saying? But me going to God, someone who I know could not judge me. It was just a different type of feeling. Like 
God saved me, like, and, and I couldn't ever repay him, like, so I give my life, I'm devoted to him because of all the amazing things that he did for me. You get what I'm saying? So I, I could never repay God for the things he's done in my life, so I give my life to him, like, me going back to that old way of living would be a slap in his face. You get what I'm saying? I think that's, that's why I'm so devoted, because who am I without God? Nobody. This, she would not be here without my God, like, I would be nobody, so I give God all the glory, honor, and praise for making me who I am today. Okay, so I know this video was all over the place. I really tried my best to explain my whole situation, my whole testimony, and um, I hope you guys can relate. Um, I really filmed this video for girls who have truly hit rock bottom and have been truly placed in situations that they couldn't even fathom. You know what I'm saying? Like, God will bring you out. Like, nothing is too big or too dirty or too nasty of a situation for God because he's sitting right there and he's watching you through it all like he's just he stands at the door and he knocks and it's just until you answer that call and until you truly accept him into your life that's when he comes and he saves you and he can help you you get what I'm saying so it's like I don't regret a thing that I've been through but I just thank God all the more because it's truly made me who I am today yeah um I hope you guys were able to take something away today and I want to actually pray for those who have watched father God I just pray right now that you just touch every single person who has graced the opportunity to watch this video lord i just pray that you bless their hearts you bless their minds you bless their souls lord and you allow them to be able to take something away from this video today father god for anybody father god who is possibly dealing with a certain situation like mine lord i just pray that this video was able to touch them and help them father god and help them to understand that they are not alone that we all deal with certain situations father god but ultimately you are the one who brings us out father god you are the one who helps us and heals us lord touch these people today father god for we each have our own testimonies lord I just pray that you bless each and every person that, that comes across this video, Father God. You allow them to be healed and to be transformed in a positive way, Lord. I just pray that your spirit just covers them right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. And that you just bring them to life, Lord, in your name, Father. I just pray that you love on them, Father God. You allow them to know that your grace is there with them, that your mercy is there to keep them, Father God. And that you are just with them every step of the way, Lord. Allow them to know that you just love them so much, Father God. Because you truly died for our sins, Father God. And we just thank you so much. We thank you every day for all that you've done. Lord God, bless these people, be with them, Lord. For these blessings, we ask you in your name, Jesus. Amen. So, ultimately, I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit more about me and understand why I go so hard for God today because He went hard for me. Like, He goes hard for me, so I go hard for Him. I return the favor, and I know that there are other people out there who need God, who need to know who He is because they don't. And it just means so much to me to be able to explain that to other people. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you stayed all the way to the end, please do not forget to subscribe. I would love for you to stay and become a glam doll today. Um, also, if you guys are interested, please leave your testimonies down below because I would love to hear some of you, your stories personally. And I would also love to hear if you guys were able to take something away today because I truly hope so. I thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all and I'll be sure to see you guys all in my next video. Bye!